if you want to calibrate electrolytic conductivity electrodes, then you've come to the right place. I am Manfred Schleicher, work at Jumo and show you in this video how to calibrate the relative cell constant and the temperature coefficient safely. The measurement of conductivity is usually done with measuring cells like I show you here. This here is a two-pole conductive conductivity cell. Cells based on this principle measure very small conductivities up to a maximum of 15 millisiemens per centimeter. For cells of this type, I will show you the necessary calibrations. For high conductivities, the inductive cells are used. With these, the measurement of conductivities from approximately 200 microsiemens per centimeter is possible. Here I have already set up a measuring chain with a conductive measuring cell. The measuring cell is connected to the transmitter and the transmitter measures the conductance, which is the reciprocal of the ohmic resistance. At the transmitter I have entered the cell constant of the cell. This corresponds to 1 per centimeter. The cell constant describes the geometry of the cell and this is a factor by which the conductance must be multiplied to obtain the conductivity. The cell constant, 1 per centimeter, is the nominal cell constant. However, the effective cell constant always deviates somewhat from the nominal one. This deviating behavior must be compensated by the transmitter. By measuring in a test solution with known conductivity, the transmitter determines the percentage of the cell constant by which the conductance must be multiplied to obtain the conductivity. This percentage is the relative cell constant. The conductivity measuring cell has a RTD temperature probe whose temperature is also displayed on the transmitter. The display informs me about the temperature of the test solution. This is 20 centigrades. On the label of the solution, I can read the conductivity for 20 centigrades. This is 1.278 millisiemens per centimeter. For temperatures between the indicated values, it is practical to interpolate linearly. At the transmitter, I start the calibration routine for the relative cell constant and enter the known conductivity of the test solution. The determined relative cell constant is displayed here. This should be in a range of 80 to 120%. The relative cell constants of the conductivity measuring cells must be calibrated when they are commissioned and is recommended after the cells have been cleaned. This calibration is usually not necessary for inductive cells. I complete the calibration routine. The relative cell constant is taken by the transmitter and it compensates for the deviation from the nominal cell constant. With the factory settings, the transmitters always calculate the conductivity back to 25 centigrades. They therefore indicate the conductivity of the measurement solution at 25 centigrades, even if the temperature of the measurement solution deviates from 25 centigrades. This is correct and important, because otherwise it is difficult to compare the conductivity at different temperatures. The back calculation to 25 centigrades is done by the so-called linear temperature compensation. To determine the temperature behavior of the process solution, I now temporarily switch off the compensation. And the transmitter displays from now on the actual conductivity of the measurement solution. I no longer need the test solution, but I still want to have a reliable reference. 
That's why I don't pour them back into the bottle, but discard it. From now on, we will work with a measuring solution, by which I mean the liquid from the process. I now have to determine the temperature behavior of the process solution so that the transmitter can later calculate the conductivity back to 25 centigrade. For this, I need the process solution with a temperature of about 25 centigrade and tempered to the typical process temperature. For conductivities from approximately 10 microsiemens per centimeter, the temperature behavior of the conductivity can be regarded as linear in practice. The conductivity of the process solution increases linearly with temperature. This actual conductivity is the uncompensated conductivity. If the transmitter has knowledge of the slope of the temperature behavior, it can calculate the conductivity back to 25 centigrade at all temperatures. This is the compensated conductivity. The compensated conductivity is usually displayed on the transmitter. Now I place the sensor in the baker containing the process solution with around 25 centigrade. And I determine the uncompensated conductivity. I have to wait until the end value of the temperature is displayed. The temperature is approximately 25.3 centigrade and at this temperature the uncompensated conductivity is 2.1 millisiemens per centimeter. Then I place the sensor in the measurement solution with the working temperature. The working temperature is 40.2 centigrade and the transmitter shows an uncompensated conductivity of 2.7 millisiemens per centimeter. With these two pairs of values, I determine the slope of the temperature behavior of the process solution. The conductivity changes over the temperature range from 2.1 to 2.7 millisiemens per centimeter. That's an increase of about 29%. Based on 1 Kelvin, the change in conductivity is about 1.95%. This is the temperature coefficient. With the help of the temperature coefficient, the transmitter will determine the compensated conductivity from the measured uncompensated conductivity and the present temperature. I activate the linear temperature compensation again on the transmitter. and I enter the determined temperature coefficient. The transmitter now shows me the compensated conductivity. If measurements are always taken in the same solution, I only have to determine the temperature coefficient once and enter it in the transmitter. That's it. The measuring chain is an operation and measuring the compensated conductivity. I thank you for watching and thumbs up if you liked it. See you soon.